All right, we're looking at a portable battery pack I made. I sort of added quite a bit, a few features into it. Um, but essentially, it's an ammo case here. Got this from Harbor Freight with a coupon for $5.99. It's lightweight. It's got a nice handle. It's water resistant. I wouldn't drop it in a pond or anything. But it should be fine in a light rain. Got a couple of defining features here. I have this panel I picked up. It's got some USB ports in it and a 12 volt, 24 volt. Of course, it only puts out 12 volts. And a little uh, voltage ID here, which tells me how much I got in my battery. It's connected directly to the battery through this contact switch, so I can check it at any time without it even having to be on. Um, the contact switch is to uh, keep it from draining the battery constantly. Now, this is supposed to be completely water resistant, ignoring that hole which a switch was supposed to go there, uh, but didn't. Now, this is actually version 3, but all these got are sealed or, and waterproof switching. I got some sealant here. Now going to the back, this is the input source. You can put anything between 12 volts all the way up to 18 volts into here. It goes directly into the charge controller, which converts it down to uh, 12, 12 and a half to 13 volts to charge up the battery. Up at the front, we got some solar. Um, we got some LED lights. You notice they're different sizes. I ordered from a few different sellers because they didn't have what I wanted. And only one seller actually sent me what I wanted. I'm actually missing two. Uh, hopefully the order I get in completely will have all the ones I want. This is a controller for the LED. It's a pulse width modulator. It goes up to 8 amps. Um, hopefully I'll be able to power this up once I get all the 9 watt Hawkeye LEDs. They got three 3 watt LEDs in each of them. And they're pretty bright. Now up here we got the master switch. This puts power to these items, so everything here now has power and the LEDs now have power. This switch up here converts the LEDs from two different modes. First mode is only two LEDs. Uh, yeah, that's going to completely blow out. Uh, mode two has all the LEDs. Mode 0, which has no LEDs. Now let's open this up and take a look. Oh, in case you didn't see, this is what controls how bright it is from off to full. I'm going to switch that off. Now in here we got two adapters I made. Not the best spot to keep them. Uh, but this will allow you to charge it directly from your car port. It will also let you plug in here. And in my case, connect it directly to some 12 volt LED strips. Of course you can plug it into the rear here. Unplug that into your car cigarette port and it will charge from that as well. As long as your car is on. I wouldn't recommend charging it from an off car. Otherwise, you're just draining your own car battery. Now, this switch, this one, connects it to the solar panel. This does 18 volts at 2.5 watts in maximum sunlight. It's meant to be put on your visor. I got it on sale for $9. It's an okay panel. Now in here you can see the components. Uh, this is the first time I really built this. Uh, I took it apart and put it together a few times. So it's not exactly how I like it, but since I'm going to be using it tomorrow, I'm not going to change anything. But the main component I would change would be the solar controller here. This is a 3 amp solar controller, so it's got some limitations on it. Uh, how much battery power I can, how much power I can pull from the battery, which is why I can't put the LEDs at full brightness. Now, here's the LEDs. 
Uh, this is a two connected one, and this is, of course, connects the other, I believe, four I have in there. And a Scotty dial, it allows me to switch from two to full all of them on at once. Still missing two of those, but hopefully I get all the 23 millimeter ones in soon. The battery's lead acid. I decided to go lead acid simply because lithium ion battery solar controllers are kind of expensive at the moment versus a six dollar controller i believe it was 23 dollars not to mention the lithium ion batteries aren't exactly cheap either uh, as long as you don't drain it below 10 volts and keep it topped off every few weeks it should last you quite a while it's a sealed lead acid 12 volt 10 amp hour battery they'll run you about 18 dollars if you buy them individually I got one fuse here. I really should have a fuse on the input here. But the input goes directly to the solar part of the controller. The battery input comes out over here and here, which then splits between that and comes back over to the, um, yeah, that's all really right there. Now, I have all these plugged in here. I would have wired this a little bit differently. I could probably get it down to one terminal block if I ever redo it, but it's a bit of a bird's nest. I like to rewire it so all everything comes in on one side and the battery is completely over. The battery is held in by this 3M tape. Pretty strong stuff. Uh, I got three meters for $3.00 nine ten feet about and I just put two solid strips on the back all the way up to the bottom and stuck it in there and it holds pretty well you can flip this upside down and that stays in there unlike these things which 99 cents for 10 of them really I'm gonna have to rip this off and put some of this 3m tape on there to get those stuck I would change out this to a flat surface mount with a waterproof cap on it, uh, but that part didn't arrive in time, so I ended up super gluing one of these in. Most of them are crimped together like that, so they slide on and off, so it's really, really easy to swap this around or replace anything. Uh, I didn't really have much of a problem. I did solder some units on here. Uh, not exactly the greatest idea, but again, it was the prototype. And we'll see how well it holds up over this weekend.